Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by Smart Exam Resources. In today's video, I shall explain to you the concept of oxidation, reduction and redox reactions. So before I explain to you the concepts of all of these, okay, I'll try to uh, tell you a few ways of remembering uh, at least two definitions. Okay, so first is uh, the oil rig. Obviously, you must be aware of the word oil rig if your teachers must have taught you else if it is new you can pay attention so o stands for oxidation so oxidation is what oxidation is loss and loss of what loss of electrons or loss of hydrogen so you can define oxidation as loss of electrons or loss of hydrogen so I'm writing it down here again so this is oxidation why am I writing it down here because there are totally four definitions of oxidation so one is it is loss of electrons secondly it is loss of hydrogen okay and reduction what is reduction so r stands for reduction and reduction is just the opposite it is the gain of electrons or hydrogen so let me just chart the same thing here so this is about reduction and we just saw that reduction is the gain of electrons or it is the gain of hydrogen okay so I have two definitions in place now what about the other two that I was talking about well the other two are also simple but there's no mnemonic so I'll just write them directly here so oxid so oxidation is also and a gain of oxygen it's a gain of oxygen just the opposite what is reduction reduction is the loss of oxygen and then the last definition it is an increase so it is an increase in the oxidation state or oxidation numbers you may say so reduction is the opposite it is a decrease in the oxidation state or oxidation numbers again like I told you so these are the four definitions of oxidation and reduction so what do you mean by redox well redox refers to a reaction in which oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously okay so with this basic info now we are going to take examples of oxidation reduction and see where redox reactions are also taking place okay so that means where uh, there will be oxidation and reduction happening simultaneously so let me take the example of uh, the easiest one and that is related to the loss or gain of oxygen so let me just number the um, choices uh, the way i'm going to explain the video so this will be my one i'm going to explain oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen okay whether it is loss of oxygen gain of oxygen let's see that so now I'll take the first example as Fe2O3. So Fe2O3, iron oxide. So if I'm going to reduce this iron oxide with the help of carbon monoxide. Oh, I just said that. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, uh, fine. So suppose you do not know that I'm going to reduce iron oxide with the help of carbon monoxide. But yes, if I'm going to react carbon monoxide with iron oxide, what do I expect? I expect two products one of them is iron next is carbon dioxide now let me balance it so this is 3co this has to be 2fe and this is 
three CO two. Okay, now if I have to see a relation between my reactants and the products, what am I going to do? I'm going to simply connect my reactants and products the way I'm doing it with the line. So now here, what's happening is Fe two O three has changed into Fe. So here, what is happening? There's a loss of oxygen. And what did we just see? If you look at the definitions on the screen, reduction is the loss of oxygen. So in this case, iron oxide got reduced. So this is an example of reduction. Okay. Now, if I talk about carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, what's the relation? So well, these two are related by the opposite. And what does it mean? Well, it means that carbon monoxide has gained an oxygen, so it has undergone oxidation. So this is an example of oxidation. So aren't oxidation and reduction taking place simultaneously? Yes, they are. So what can you say about this? Well, obviously you'll be saying that this is an example of a redox reaction. Redox because the two e reactions are taking place simultaneously together at the same time. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to take another example, and that example is. Sorry for that. And the example is uh, about the. I can just take another color. Okay. Reaction between copper oxide and magnesium. So when copper oxide and magnesium they react, what are the products? The products are copper and magnesium oxide. Okay. Any balancing required? No. It's already balanced. Okay. So now again, I'm going to find out whether it's oxidation or reduction. So I'm going to connect the copper oxide and copper. And what do I find? Well, I find that copper oxide has lost its oxygen. So it means, is it an oxidation or reduction? Yes. This is an example of reduction. Why? Because copper oxide lost oxygen. Similarly, let me see if I can find a relation between magnesium and magnesium oxide so these two how are they related so magnesium has gained an oxygen on the product side so this is obviously an example of oxidation so once again oxidation reduction take place simultaneously so this again is an example of a redox reaction okay so i can call this as a redox reaction this again is an example of a redox reaction fine one more example come in so this time i'll again change my color to see what see yellow one okay so now if i talk about the reaction between copper and oxygen okay so when copper is heated in the presence of oxygen what happens i get copper oxide any balancing needed yes i need to put in two over here why two because oxygen is two so in this case copper oxide this becomes two as well okay so now let me see how these are related so here if you see there is a straight away addition of oxygen to copper and this is an example of oxidation yes and why oxidation because simply oxygen has been added to copper fine and i'm going to take my last example because i'm very sure by now you must have understood the concept of oxidation okay and reduction and obviously redox so now i'll take my green color back and this time i'll take the example of magnesium so when i talk about magnesium if i heat magnesium in the presence of oxygen what do i get i get mgo and any balancing needed yes this becomes two this becomes two okay now it's balanced here again once more there is simply addition of oxygen and therefore we say this is an example of oxidation cool brilliant okay so we are done with the example involving oxygen so now we know that there are four different ways of explaining the concept of oxidation and reduction so i'm going to deal with them one by one so now let me just separate this okay cool so now talking in terms of what you want me to do hydrogen loss of electrons or 
gain of electrons or you want me to explain the reduction oxidation in terms of in terms of what look at the last option it's oxidation state yes now i feel i should be explaining to you the concept of the oxidation state first before i even explain to you uh, what is meant by the increase in the oxidation state or the uh, decrease in the oxidation state because if you do not know you won't be able to um, answer the questions and also exams will have questions based on calculating the oxidation state of uh, ionic compounds or covalent compounds right so what i am going to do now is i'm going to explain to you the concept of oxidation state fine so here i have written down the definition of the oxidation state and what does it tell you well it tells you it is the apparent charge that an atom has in a molecule or ion so why have i written here specifically molecule or an ion so let me just explain to you because when you have to find the oxidation states you don't have to only find the oxidation states of ionic compounds it is also quite possible that you will be asked to find the oxidation state of methane now you will be surprised how when there are no charges well the thing is since this entire thing the concept of uh, finding oxidation or reduction in terms of oxidation state is being used so definitely we will have to consider the covalent compounds also okay so then there are basic rules that you need to keep in mind when you are dealing with covalent compounds once you keep that in mind you will never make errors i'll explain to you how you have to deal with covalent compounds okay so when i talk about a molecule i'm referring to any kind of covalent compound that is present and ion also so basically it is the apparent charge that an atom has in an in a molecule or an ion so now how do you write the oxidation uh, states basically so usually you there are there are two things that are involved so if i have to write uh, the oxidation state for example of uh, say oxygen so you know oxygen needs two electrons to gain two electrons to complete its octet so if it is gaining two electrons so what is happening basically the charge on it is becoming negative okay it's accepting electrons so it's becoming more negative so the charge on oxygen becomes minus 2 okay so now you will wonder whether to write minus 2 or 2 minus there'll be this confusion well in the igcse you might or might not lose marks for not writing this properly but in the higher grades definitely you must keep it in mind so what's the difference if i write minus 2 and if i write 2 minus well this tells you about the charge so when i write 2 minus it is just a charge so i can write o2 minus i can write h plus 1 so what what is h plus 1 and what is h2 minus these are charges okay but when i talk about minus 2 that is specifically i'm talking about the oxidation state so there's a difference one refers to the oxidation state and the other refers to the charges so whenever you write the charges you're going to write the number the value followed by the sign and whenever you write the oxidation state it has to be the number preceded by the sign or the value preceded by the sign okay so since i'm explaining to you the oxidation state i'm going to write the sign first and then followed by the number you have to keep it in mind and if you follow a proper procedure when you go to your ibdp or a levels or whichever boards you want to migrate to you'll never lose your marks for such kind of things these are basic things you need to know fine okay so two things are present for an oxidation state is the sign and the value so i'm just going to write that a sign is important and there is a value which is important okay so what is the sign going to be positive or negative well the sign can be either it can be a positive it can be a negative sign so when there when there is a positive sign it means that the atom has lost an electron right and when there's a negative sign it means that the atom has gained an electron right 
So now, and what is the value talking about? Value refers to the number of electrons lost or gained because you're going to talk in terms of loss or gain of electrons. So that value is going to tell you how many electrons are lost or how many electrons are gained. So it simply tells you the number of electrons lost or gained. Now why am I writing lost or gain? I really do not know if it's a positive sign or a negative sign. Like I told you on the top, if it's a plus sign, it indicates that the atom has lost electron. And if it's a negative sign, it's going to say it, atom has gained an electron. So depending on whether it is losing electrons, gaining electrons, sign is going to vary. So, but definitely for sure, I know the value tells me what whether the number of electrons are lost or gained. Fine. So keeping these two things in mind, now I'm going to teach you how to calculate the oxidation states of atoms okay in molecules or an ion so let me just tell you uh, to begin with whether it is uh, the oxidation state of uh, a covalent compound that you're finding out or an ionic compound that you're finding out treat the covalent compound like you would have uh, treated the ionic compound okay don't treat the covalent compound as a covalent compound think of the covalent compound as an ionic compound you'll understand what I'm trying to say once I give you examples okay so to begin with if i talk about methane okay you know methane the formula for methane if you have yet not studied the formula for methane not studied the organic chemistry you won't be knowing the formula for methane but it's still fine i'll tell you so methane is ch4 and methane is technically a covalent compound so the compound that is formed by sharing of electrons is a covalent compound right so now over here how do I find out the oxidation numbers? So now the simple thing is since it's a covalent compound, the charge on the covalent compound is zero. I'm talking about the total charge. Okay. So if I talk about the total charge on my methane, I have to think about the total charge as being equal to zero. That's how I'm going to imagine this. So now I know hydrogen has just one electron. It can either lose one electron, it can either gain one electron. So I'm going to treat this hydrogen as being one. Okay. And then I'm going to write four into one because there are four of hydrogens. I do not know how many carbons are there. I'm going to write it. Sorry, how what's the charge? I do not know the oxidation number of uh, carbons. So I'm just going to write it as X. And I know the total charge on this molecule is zero because it's a covalent compound so i'm going to write it as zero that gives me x plus four equals zero and x equals minus four so what is the oxidation number of uh, carbon so the oxidation number of carbon is what so oxidation number i'm going to write it down here so oxidation number of carbon equals minus four and hydrogen equals plus one okay that's one thing right now next i'm going to give you another example and that example is going to be of so now before we take some more examples i'll be uh, making you go through this little write-up that i put on the screen and what does it tell you well it tells you that the oxidation numbers of group one elements that is lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium francium are all plus one and the group two elements that is beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium uh, the oxidation number of these elements is always plus two so what do you observe you observe that the elements in group one and two will virtually always have the same have the group number as their oxidation numbers okay so whatever is the group number is going to be the oxidation number so group one will have oxidation number of plus one and group two elements will have oxidation number of plus two now below what have i written well below i have written that the maximum oxidation numbers now please be careful i'm not saying the oxidation numbers i'm using the word maximum oxidation numbers now what do i mean by the word maximum oxidation numbers that means there can be other oxidation numbers as well but when i'm telling you the word maximum oxidation numbers means i'm saying whether there are other oxidation numbers or no but if there are more than one oxidation numbers then there are certain rules that you need to keep in mind so for example the maximum oxidation number for group one is always going to be one 
for group 2 is going to be 2 group 13 is going to be 3 now from here onwards it's very simple you just take the group number so whatever is the group number from the group number you minus 10 and you get the oxidation numbers so group 13 is 13 minus 10 which is 3 group 14 is 14 minus 10 which is 4 similarly group 15 is 5 group 16 is 6 and group 17 is 7 so what is the meaning of the word maximum oxidation numbers well the thing is that it is not possible to lose more electrons than there are in the outer shell so the maximum possible oxidation number for a group 16 element is plus 6 because there are 6 electrons in the outer shell so basically what are they trying to tell you that the oxidation number can be maximum now you see what i mean to tell you exactly is whenever you talk about a range of values okay so the range is from negative to positive so obviously when i'm going to talk about maximum ox oxidation numbers i'm going to talk about the positive values now here it means that it is not possible for an atom to lose electrons which are more than the number of electrons in the outer shell so for example look at the group one element okay if i talk about sodium i'm taking an example of sodium now i know sodium has an atomic number of 11 okay electronic configuration is 281 that means it has got one electron in the outermost shell is it possible for sodium to lose more than one electron when it is combining no it is always going to have the valence electrons which are involved in the forming of bonds so the maximum oxidation number for group one element is going to be one only so now look at the group four okay sorry the group 14 here it is said that the group 14 elements can have a maximum state of oxidation number of plus 4. Now can you think of an element um, which is present in the group 14 which is very common in your reactions? Just think. Well I hope you have thought about the very common element that you will be coming across and that is your carbon. Okay I am giving an example of carbon. Now what is the atomic number of carbon? it is 6 what's the electronic configuration 2 comma 4 how many electrons are there in the outermost shell of carbon well you can see there are 4 so carbon so carbon can lose 1 can lose 2 can lose 3 or can lose all is 4 electrons it's still fine but can it lose beyond 4 electrons if at all I'm talking about losing no it cannot lose more than four because there are four only four electrons in the outermost orbit so when electrons are being when electrons are being lost or gained okay or shared what is the total actual idea the idea is to form a stable octet okay definitely there are unstable there are incomplete octets which are also uh, like you know stable but then we'll talk about those later in the higher grades as of now you need to focus about in the grade 10 syllabus you only need to know that whenever atoms are losing electrons or uh, gaining electrons or sharing electrons they do so so that they become uh, they get the stable electronic configuration of a noble gas okay so now over here there are four electrons in the outermost orbit of carbon so carbon cannot lose more than four so the maximum oxidation number for carbon is going to be four okay so if it loses all four is going to be plus four if it loses three is going to be plus three if it loses 2 is going to be plus 2, loses 1 is going to be plus 1, etc. Okay. Or if it gains 4, is going to be minus 4. Are you getting what I am saying? Yeah, that's what it is. So technically speaking, you need to remember that the maximum oxidation numbers mean this. It, it means nothing else. It is telling you the maximum. I am not telling you there is only one oxidation number for group 4 which is plus 4 or group 15 is plus 5. But the maximum in any case is going to be equal to the number of electrons in the outermost shell and that is equal to the uh, group number for groups 1 and 2 and it is group number minus 10 for uh, group 13 to 17 okay so i hope i'm clear in this so i'll just tell you i'll just explain to you uh, some examples okay and while doing examples i'll just tell you the rules if i tell you all the rules at one time it will be super confusing okay so let me take an example 
so the first example that i'll be taking is of sulfur dioxide so suppose you have sulfur dioxide now you know sulfur dioxide is supposed to be a covalent compound so i'm writing it down here every time you need not write it down so this is a covalent compound okay so if it's a covalent compound obviously it's not going to have a overall charge so if it's a covalent compound the overall charge is going to be zero okay so this is going to be the overall charge okay so now what is the next thing how do i find out uh, the oxidation uh, numbers for oxygen and uh, sulfur well in this case we need to see which is the more electronegative of the two and obviously as you know oxygen is more electronegative okay compared to sulfur and therefore this oxygen is going to be assigned its normal valency and what do you mean by i'm going to assign its normal valency i'm going to assign it the valency that the charge that it would have in an ionic compound so suppose if oxygen was present in an ionic compound what kind of a charge do you think would have been present on the oxygen obviously you know the atomic number of oxygen is 6 so it is 2 comma 4 sorry atomic number of oxygen is 8 it is 2 comma 6 so if it is electronegative it is going to pull two electrons towards itself so therefore it is going to have a charge of minus 2 so what am i going to do i'm going to give it a charge okay of minus 2 and like i told you the charge is usually the oxidation number okay so in this case because oxygen is electronegative i'm going to assign oxygen its normal valency so i'm going to consider it as being an uh, oxygen being present in the ionic compound okay and then pulling two electrons towards itself so in that case i'm going to give it give oxygen a charge of minus 2 so the oxidation number is also going to be equal to the charge of oxygen which is minus 2 and how many oxygens are present in sulfur dioxide there are two oxygens present in sulfur dioxide so i write a number 2 ahead of it and plus and i do not know the oxidation number of sulfur i'm trying to find this out i'm going to write this x over here and the overall thing is equal to 0 so now if i'm going to solve this it becomes x minus 4 equals 0 and x equals plus 4 so that means if i now have to ask myself what is the oxidation number so my oxidation number of sulfur obviously i have found this out to be plus 4 and that of oxygen i assume that it is going to behave like an oxygen in the ionic compound because oxygen is more electronegative compared to sulfur in this case and therefore i took its normal valency normal charge and which i also took it as being the oxidation number so now what do i have i have both the oxidation numbers and i have solved this sum i found out the oxidation numbers okay so let me take another example and this time i'm going to take um sulfate ion maybe okay you're all aware of uh, sulfuric acid it has got the formula h2so4 so i'm going to take an example of the sulfate ion so if i write the sulfate ion as so4 2 minus okay so4 2 minus so what's going to happen over here again i'm going to talk about the sulfur and the oxygen so which one is more electronegative well i find that oxygen again is more electronegative so again i'm going to assign its normal valency to it and therefore i am going to write minus 2 for oxygen and over here it is o4 how many oxygens are there there are four oxygens okay plus do i know the oxidation number of sulfur i do not know i'm going to put a x here now can you see it is so4 2 minus so this is not a covalent compound it's an ionic compound so i'm going to write the charge minus 2 okay as my oxidation or uh, overall um, overall charge okay to the right so that means whenever it's a covalent compound overall charge is zero but when it's an ionic compound the overall charge is done that is seen on the ion so here it is seen as minus two so it's written as uh, two minus i'm going to take it as minus two over here um, now i'm going to solve this so this becomes x four into minus two is minus eight equals minus 2 so this becomes x equals 8 minus 2 so x equals 6 so if i have to write the oxidation numbers okay 
what am I going to do once again oxidation numbers for sulfur is plus 6 and for oxygen is still the same it is minus 2 okay so can you see how easy it is to find the oxidation numbers only what you need to keep in mind is you need to see whether it is covalent or ionic so here I am writing it down as SO4 2 minus as my ionic it has got a charge so it is an ionic okay so now if it is a covalent compound set it equal to 0 the total charge equal to 0 and if it's an ionic compound set the total charge equal to total charge on the ion okay fine I'll take another example so the other example would be Cr2 O7 2 minus now in this case what is going to happen is we know the more electronegative atom is oxygen and therefore once again the oxidation number of oxygen is going to be minus 2 so here I'm going to write the oxidation number of oxygen which is minus 2 how many of oxygens are present 7 are present okay now here chromium is Cr2 is diatomic so I'm going to write this as 2 into I do not know the oxidation number of chromium I'm going to write it down as X so 2 into X plus 7 into minus 2 gives me minus 2 once again I'm going to solve it for my X and I get 7 into minus 2 is minus 14 equals minus 2 so this becomes 2x equals 14 minus 2 so 2x equals 7 sorry what am I doing 2x equals 12 and x equals 12 divided by 2 which is 6 so if I ask you what's the oxidation number so oxidation number of chromium I just found it to be plus 6 and of oxygen I have already taken it to be minus 2 so here again I found out the oxidation numbers excuse me okay I'll take another example and I'm going to take the example of hydrogen peroxide which is H2O2 okay now I know that once again this is a covalent compound so it's not going to have any kind of charge the overall charge is going to be zero and I know that my oxidation number for oxygen is negative 2 okay so now let me see what happens over here I know the overall charge is zero I know it is 2 into minus 2 and then there are two hydrogens so I write 2 into x let me solve this so 2x minus 4 equals 0 and 2x equals 4 so x equals plus 2 so that means what is the oxidation number of hydrogen the oxidation number I'm writing it down this is an exception please be careful it's not a normal example I have done this to just show you that every time you cannot take oxygen as negative to there are exceptions and you need to know when not to take the um, charge as minus 2 okay the oxidation number as minus 2 so now over here it means that the oxidation number the oxidation number of oxygen I have taken it to be as minus 2 that is still fine we know oxygen can have a charge of minus 2 and oxidation uh, state number of minus 2 but when I talk about uh, that of hydrogen now how many electrons does hydrogen have well it has only one electron so I'm writing this as plus 2 this means that hydrogen is losing two electrons if it doesn't have two electrons is it possible for hydrogen to lose two electrons well no so in that case this is not how you solve it so this was an exception okay like I told you you have to be careful so now what do you do then in that case so it's very simple what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it in the other way although oxygen is more electronegative but it is with hydrogen and with hydrogen I need to consider the case of hydrogen that hydrogen cannot lose more than one electron so I'm going to start with writing okay I'll just erase this and write H2O2 on the top again so this is not possible first I'm writing this down here else you'll wonder why I miswrote it okay 
now again i'm writing h2o2 so when you have an example like this okay see that things are not getting violated the rules are not getting violated if someone doesn't have 2 rupees how can he give a how can he give 2 rupees to you he should have 2 rupees to give you it's the same logic if i don't have uh like suppose an x number of uh, rupees with me i cannot give it to you so in the same way if there are no if there are not those many electrons present with that atom the atom cannot lose those electrons right so i'm going to talk about this hydrogen i'm going to write 2 into plus 1 now this time i'm going to consider hydrogen for the reasons i told you plus i am going to now find out what is the oxidation state of oxygen in h2o2 so i do not know that i'm going to write this down as x like i told you it's a covalent compound total is going to be 0 so let me just solve it so this becomes 2 plus 2x equals 0 2 equals minus 2x so in this case my x becomes 2 divided by minus 2 which is minus 1 so did you see over here that the oxidation state of oxygen is not 2 in this case it is going to be minus 1 fair enough like i told you uh coming back to the earlier example where i had um, mentioned a table here and i had told you that oxygen like maximum oxidation numbers now see the logic applies i had used the word maximum oxidation numbers where i used the word maximum telling you that it is a maximum possible value for oxidation number but it can be less than that okay so in the same way over here oxygen can take the value of minus 2 so also it can take the value of minus 1 getting it so this is how to interpret uh, the above statements okay i'll give you more examples let us take the example of the nitrate ion which is no3 minus now here again we know compared to nitrogen oxygen is more electronegative so in this case once again we are going to consider the oxidation number of nitrogen being unknown so we are going to take it as x Plus three into oxidation number of oxygen is how much? It's minus two, and the overall charge is minus one. So x minus six equals minus one. X equals minus one plus six. So x equals plus five. So what is the oxidation number? Now I'm going to write it in short. Oxidation number of oxygen. Well, I have taken it as being minus two. and the oxidation number of nitrogen is i just found it to be plus 5 okay so this was one more example also you need to remember a few things more um and the rule is oxidation number of any uncombined element is zero so that means if there is an element and it is totally uncombined it has not combined with some other element to form another ionic compound or a molecule so in that case it's um, the oxidation number is going to be zero so what are the examples examples can be any you can take hydrogen oxygen chlorine bromine if you find these kind of molecules okay existing they are uncombined okay so in that case what is the oxidation number of uh, the hydrogen in h2 it's going to be zero so the oxidation numbers are going to be zero for all of them okay so have the oxidation numbers as zero okay so now having understood the concept of oxidation numbers let us see how you can use these oxidation numbers to identify whether an uh whether a reaction is a redox reaction and where the oxidation or the reduction is taking place okay so now for that i'll give you an example a very simple example in which hydrogen gas combines with oxygen gas and gives you a product which is water and water in the form of a liquid so here to balance it out i'm going to add two here and then or two here okay so now that i've taught you or to find the oxidation numbers you can quickly pause the video and i will not again find the oxidation numbers i'll just give you the oxidation numbers okay so once you're done calculating you can just get back to the video so the oxidation number of oxygen sorry the oxidation number of hydrogen 
in H2. Now remember I told you that on the top is just written that the oxidation number of any uncombined element is 0. So here you can see H2 is uncombined, O2 is uncombined, they are yet to react. So that means the oxidation number of this hydrogen is 0 and the oxidation number of oxygen is also 0. Okay, so we have these oxidation numbers, I am writing them down here. So oxidation numbers, okay, and here if you can see, when you, said, when you uh, try to calculate, you will find that the hydrogen, like I told you initially also, cannot have a oxidation number of more than 1, it can either lose 1 electron, okay, or gain 1 electron. So now in this case, the oxygen is going to have the oxidation number of minus 2 here, and you can pause the video and calculate this, there is no uh, harm in doing that, okay. Don't wonder if the previous video gave you an oxidation number of minus 1, why the oxidation number of oxygen here in water is minus 2. You calculate and you will be convinced, okay. So now let me just talk in terms of oxidation reduction. So if I am talking about oxidation reduction in terms of your oxidation numbers. So now how do I do that? Well, it's very simple. Just look at the hydrogen, okay. What's happening to the hydrogen? Now here I am just writing it down. This is for hydrogen this is for oxygen so when i talk about hydrogen to hydrogen i'm going to compare the oxidation states what do i find i find that from being zero it has gone to being z plus one that means for hydrogen the oxidation state has increased and like i told you the oxidation state has increased from zero to positive one so here what is it it's oxidation so this is an example of sorry this is an example of oxidation excuse me okay this is an example of oxidation where the oxidation state so i'm just writing os do not write os i'm just writing it in for short for short form so oxidation state has gone from zero to positive one okay so this is oxidation now what about oxygen okay i have oxygen also and if you see the state of oxygen, what has happened to oxygen? It has gone from being 0 to negative 2. So negative 2 is less than 0 if you see that way. So then in that case, the oxidation state has decreased. So this is obviously a reduction. Okay. So this is how you use the oxidation numbers to identify whether a reaction is uh, a redox and uh, if it's a redox reaction then uh, which uh, element is getting oxidized uh, or uh, which is getting reduced okay so over here i'll write it down for you reduction because the oxidation state has decreased okay here i can say it has increased see i'm using all short forms you do not do all of this in the examination please okay it has decreased from 0 to negative 2. Fine. So this is how it is. Giving you more examples, I get calcium solid plus SN2 plus gives you Ca2 plus plus SN solid. Now you will wonder what is all this. So I will explain to you when I uh, explain to you the ionic equations. So as of now, just consider uh, the equation that is given to you, okay. So what is seen in this? So if you observe carefully, calcium here is uncombined. So its oxidation state is 0, the oxidation number is 0 and uh, SN2 plus is 2 plus. That means it is a part of a compound. See AQ means aqueous. Aqueous means it is a part, it is an ionic compound, okay it's a it's a compound okay and sn2 plus has a charge and sn2 plus is in the aqueous form it's a part of a solution okay so that means sn2 plus aqueous so the charge on sn2 plus is plus 2 on the calcium again it's mentioned ca2 plus again it is a, a part of a compound okay dissolved in water so aqueous so the charge is plus 2 and again tin tin you can see tin is a solid solid meaning it is the tin element has been formed okay and it is in the pure state so it is uncombined it is having an oxidation state or oxidation number of zero so now in this case if i'm going to compare this equation for oxidation reduction i can see clearly that 
calcium has increased its oxidation number or oxidation state from 0 to plus 2. So there is an increase in the oxidation state. So I can say this is an example of oxidation. Similarly, if I talk about SN2 plus going to SN. So from plus 2 it has gone to 0. So the oxidation number has decreased. So this is an example of reduction. So this is a redox reaction and where oxidation and reduction is as shown on the screen. Fine. So I think these are enough examples to explain to you uh, oxidation and reduction in terms of uh, the increase or decrease in the oxidation numbers, right? So now I'll explain to you, uh, okay, let me just mark what we have done here. So let me just, okay, go back to the screen, one minute, okay. Okay, so here we are, we have finished with the gain of oxygen, loss of oxygen already. We have spoken about the increase and decrease in the oxidation state. So the second one is also done. Now we talk about the loss of electrons. So I'm marking this as a third one. Okay, so now let's ex understand oxidation and reduction in terms of loss of electrons. Okay, or gain of electrons and for hydrogen we will consider it last. Okay. So as you can see in this example, which I have taken for oxidation, okay, oxidation is a loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons and the example that I have taken is 2Na solid plus Cl2 gas gives you 2NaCl, okay. So let us understand what exactly is happening in this reaction. So as you can see to the left, I have written the electronic configurations for sodium and chlorine which are 281 and uh, 287 respectively. So as you can see the sodium will be happy to lose this one electron while chlorine will really want to take that one electron to complete its octet. So by losing one electron sodium is able to complete its octet okay and by uh, gaining that one electron chlorine is also able to complete its octet. So now what is happening exactly if I write the half reactions okay the half uh, reactions are basically what sorry the half equations I mean so I'm going to write it on on the top here the half equations the half equations means what is happening um, at one end okay that's what you say if it's a electrolysis you say what's happening at one electrode okay so now over here for sodium what is happening sodium is actually going to lose an electron and become Na plus so what's happening is sodium loses an electron to chlorine and then it becomes Na plus so what is happening over here oxidation is loss of electrons so sodium is getting oxidized so this is oxidation now there's something more to it be careful observe carefully so now cl okay cl is a monoatomic or a diatomic it's a diatomic molecule right so first i'm going to write in terms of a single atom of chlorine i know it's cl is cl2 okay but i'm going to write what happens to one chlorine atom so that chlorine atom is going to do what then? It's going to accept the electron that was lost by the sodium and it is going to change to Cl minus. Now I know that if one chlorine accepts one electron and becomes one Cl minus, then because I know chlorine is diatomic, so in all Cl2 is going to accept two electrons. Okay. So I'll write Cl2 plus 2E minus gives 2 Cl minus that means Cl2 if it is going to combine with sodium will require sodium to give it 2 electrons that means not one sodium atom but two sodium atoms have to be involved because one sodium atom can at a time lose only one electron so two sodium atoms together are going to lose two electrons and then are able to form 2 Na plus right so only if there are two sodium atoms willing to lose two electrons then those two electrons will be accepted by the chlorine diatomic molecule to form two Cl minus ions okay. So is this clear okay. So these are the half reactions. So I can say first one is the half reaction for sodium and second is the half reaction for chlorine okay fine okay Cl2 I can say. Now 
you can actually add these two half reactions okay so i'm going to just use another color here so everything to the left is the reactant and the right is the products so when i'm going to add this what am i going to do imagine this is a mathematical sum same way i'm going to add so i'll write 2 na plus minus 2 e minus plus cl2 plus 2 e minus gives you 2 na plus plus 2 cl minus so what's happening over here i am going to straight away cancel these two electrons because in which i know they got cancelled and then what is going to happen here let me rewrite this so it becomes 2 na plus cl2 gives 2 na plus plus 2 cl minus okay so in this way i can actually write the overall reaction as Two Na plus Cl two gives two Na Cl. And how did I write this two Na Cl? Because I know that the charges are the same. Na has got a plus charge, Cl has got a minus charge. So if I cross them, I get Na Cl. Okay. So this is the overall reaction. And the steps are as indicated above. This is how the overall reaction is written. Next example that I have taken is of uh, magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Now again we need to write the half reactions. Remember you can be asked to do all of this in the examination. So the half equations. Okay. So what are the half equations for magnesium and oxygen? Okay. We need to understand that. Now once again try to recollect from the previous explanation that the oxygen has an atomic number of 8 so its electronic configuration is 2 comma 6 it just needs to accept two electrons to complete its octet that means its oxidation number is going to be minus 2 right so that means one oxygen is going to lose two electrons so if one oxygen is going to lose two electrons okay and it is going to form o2 minus okay that is for sure but there is oxygen which is diatomic so in all two oxygen atoms now i can't write two oxygen like this i know it's a diatomic so i have to write this down as o2 so if one oxygen loses if one oxygen loses two electrons okay if one oxygen loses two electrons to form o2 minus i will have a diatomic oxygen losing four electrons to form 2O2 minus that is how it is now is this correct no it cannot lose if you have realized this I'll be very happy the half reactions for oxygen okay the half equation for oxygen what is it going to be oxygen has an electronic configuration of two six it needs to accept two electrons right not lose well if you got that i'm glad and if you didn't mm, be more careful sorry for that okay so now if one oxygen atom is going to accept two electrons to form O2 minus then a diatomic is going to accept four electrons to form 2O2 minus now that means this is my half equation okay the one that I wrote down okay so I'm rewriting this here O2 plus 4 e minus gives you 2 o2 minus okay fine in the same way now oxygen is going to expect magnesium to lose four electrons right because it wants to accept four electrons and because it is reacting with magnesium magnesium has got no choice 
but it will have to lose four electrons so but you know that one magnesium one magnesium is only known known to lose two electrons because electronic configuration of magnesium atomic number of magnesium is 12 so 2 comma 8 comma 2 one magnesium can only lose two electrons right so that means this is the ideal equation but because oxygen needs four electrons two magnesiums will have to in all lose four electrons okay and then the right equation is going to be 2mg 2mg what now 2mg plus and 2mg plus or 2mg2 plus 2mg2 plus 2mg2 plus why because one magnesium loses two electrons to form mg2 plus it forms mg2 plus because it has lost two electrons okay so two magnesiums will lose four electrons to form two mg2 plus okay so now these are the equations half equations okay now what do we do like i told you in the previous example we are going to add okay so we are going to add the left hand side and the right hand side to get the overall reaction so this is going to be mg plus o2 okay i'm just highlighting the arrow here so mg plus o2 gives you 2 mg 2 plus plus 2 o2 minus sorry that's 2 mg okay okay just a minute i think i messed up here i'm so sorry why did i consider that as the half equation okay this I, I think i need to erase this now because by now or either i should write this down as complete magnesium wait i'll just write this as magnesium okay magnesium and oxygen so half equations for magnesium this is better okay okay sorry for that blunder okay so now this becomes 2 mg plus o2 gives so here is my highlighting needed this is where i'm going to highlight this okay 2 mg plus o2 and i need to write the electrons so minus 40 minus plus 40 minus gives you 2 mg 2 plus plus 2 o2 minus so the same equation i can write down as cancelling of these minus 4 electrons i can write this down as 2 mg plus o2 gives you 2 mg2 plus and o2 minus and this is nothing but 2 mg plus o2 gives you 2 mg o I'm really sorry for confusing you on the top you can see i got confused so it's better like uh, see even if it's a teacher or a student if the work is messy obviously you are going to face it so you should learn from my uh, mistake i actually was not organized in writing the half equation so i sort of goofed up but good i re realized okay so this is how you write the overall equation so whenever you have to explain oxidation reduction in terms of loss or gain of electrons you're going to do it in this way now in this whole process let me tell you so in the first sum if going back to the first sum of sodium chloride so the half equation in the first one told you that oxygen oxygen uh, sorry uh, sodium atom lost electrons two sodium atoms lost two electrons so oxidation is lost that was lost and the lower one is reduction because the electrons lost by sodium were gained by chlorine okay and the same way over here the equation half equation for magnesium tells you that electrons were lost by magnesium oxidation is lost so magnesium got oxidized so magnesium uh, oxidation so this is oxidation and this is an example of reduction okay fine 
so this is how we will be using the concept of loss of gain of electrons to identify whether uh, there is an oxidation reduction happening for a species and uh, the overall uh, redox reaction you need to identify ok and so the last one remaining is oxidation and reduction in terms of hydrogen so again I will write this oil so oxidation is loss of hydrogen and reduction is gain of hydrogen so this is reduction is gain of hydrogen okay this is the last thing that is remaining now I'll explain with the help of examples okay so here I have taken three examples to explain the concept so just remember once again that oxidation is loss of hydrogen reduction is gain of hydrogen so now in this case 2 NH3 plus 3 Br2 gives you N2 plus 6 HBr that is your balanced equation for the reaction between ammonia and bromine gas so what's happening look at ammonia ammonia has three hydrogens okay but when it changes to nitrogen and HBr the change is obvious that here if I consider these two then I can say that a hydrogen has been lost by ammonia okay so clearly you can see the hydrogen disappeared from ammonia so therefore this is loss of hydrogen and therefore it is an example of oxidation similarly when you look at Br2 and HBr now there is a hydrogen connected to bromine and therefore it is gain of hydrogen and therefore it is reduction so reduction is gain of hydrogen so Br2 is getting reduced and NH3 is getting oxidized so this is oxidation reduction now another thing if you look at the reaction between H2S hydrogen sulfide and chlorine gas what's happening okay pause the video try to solve it on your own okay now continuing so if you have H2 gas okay reacting with Cl2 gas what's happening is the H2S gas if you compare this with sulfur the H2S gas is getting oxidized why is it getting oxidized because oxidation is loss it doesn't matter if I had oxidized but I'm following a particular procedure so I'm just writing it down that way so oxidation so there's oxidation happening for H2S it is getting oxidized from H2S to S to sulfur and chlorine at the same time is undergoing reduction because chlorine has gained that hydrogen so this is the reduction here and the last example over here is the copper oxide and ammonia so when copper oxide reacts with ammonia it forms copper nitrogen gas and water so consider copper oxide and copper what's happening okay now over here if you can consider this reaction okay um, there's loss of oxygen okay not hydrogen actually there's loss of oxygen so what's happening over here copper oxide is losing oxygen okay it is getting reduced now ammonia look at ammonia and look at uh, nitrogen so now look at ammonia and consider this nitrogen what has happened ammonia has lost its hydrogen so ammonia has lost its hydrogen so it has got oxidized in the process so this is oxidation so beautiful example where you have a loss of oxygen and you have a loss of hydrogen okay so this is how you can actually explain the oxidation reduction in terms of either electrons oxidation numbers your uh, oxygen or the oxidation states okay so these are the four methods and you will be asked uh, in your examinations and this is also a very important video for IBDP kids because they also have it in their syllabus okay and uh, this covers a large number of concepts even for the A levels is going to help so basically this is a foundation for uh, chemistry for any student maybe any board rather not only international but yes it's meant for the international syllabus basically 
so that is all and one more thing i would like to uh, talk about is i forgot to talk about this important concept which is the oxidizing and reducing agent so oxidizing agent and reducing agent so whom do i call as a oxidizing agent and whom do i call as a reducing agent well oxidizing agent is someone that oxidizes the other element okay and itself gets reduced so it is a substance that oxidizes other substance so how do you define an oxidizing agent i'll just write it down here quickly so here are the quick definitions and the definitions say that oxidizing agent it is a substance that oxidizes other substances and gets reduced in the process uh, and a reducing agent is a substance that or reduces other substances or substance and gets oxidized in the process so technically speaking it's very simple to understand the one that is an oxidizing agent will oxidize some other substance but itself get reduced and reducing agent will ox reduce some other substance and itself will get oxidized now let me just consider the case of say hydrogen sulfide the reaction here okay this reaction here just let's consider one example and rest is just self explanatory so here what is happening is hydrogen sulfide okay what is happening to hydrogen sulfide it undergoes oxidation so itself it undergoes oxidation so definitely hydrogen sulfide is going to be my reducing agent because the one that gets oxidized itself is the reducing agent and cl2 is getting reduced so therefore it's going to be the oxidizing agent okay the same is true for the others also the one that gets reduced is always the oxidizing agent and the one that gets oxidized is the reducing agent okay so you can do it for the other sums also later on well so that's all in today's video and i try to cover as many things as possible okay so please uh, see that um, you revise through the video whenever you revise through the video make try making your own notes try solving uh, whatever questions i whatever equations i put on the screen identify the reducing oxidizing agents okay and uh, it's it's not at all difficult it's very simple only thing is your concept should be clear once your concepts are clear nothing is difficult trust me okay so well that's all in today's video on oxidation reduction and redox equations and if you do like watching my video please do subscribe to my channel thank you